Every year after testing a ton of chairs, I pick the best ones and create an ultimate chair buying guide for you. That means this video is not a, these are the chairs that I like at these price points. No, because we're all built differently. We all sit differently. Some of you are spreaders. Some of you are tuckers. Some of you are moms. So you mother tuckers out there have different needs than dad bod folk like us. Some of you are taller. Some of you are shorter. Some of you are top contributors to global warming with how much booty juice you release per day. To help organize the video, we're gonna divide it into three height categories. Five foot three and under, then five foot four up to six foot two, and then six feet three plus. And within each of those height categories, I'm gonna have three price subcategories. You're gonna get the budget, which is zero to $400, then the mid tier is $400 to $1,000, and then the high tier, or what I like to call the I'm rich biatch tier, is gonna be anything above $1,000. At the end of the video, I'll also have a section on active seating chairs that I recommend. Active seating chairs are chairs that are generally meant for you to use more muscles and stay energized throughout the day. Timestamps will be your friend, but this year I'm gonna create a spreadsheet guide to go along with this video so it helps keep things even more organized. And in that spreadsheet, you're gonna find a few things. One is gonna be obviously the division of the chairs. The second is going to be coupons, sales. All of this will be updated to the most recent thing. Even if you're watching this video years from now, I'm gonna continue updating that spreadsheet, so please make sure you check it. The third thing you're gonna find are gonna be video links of individual reviews of each of these chairs. Yes, I've reviewed each of these chairs individually with the exception of one, this chair here. In this video, the review should come out next week, so I'll update the spreadsheet with that link as well. And then finally, you're gonna find my affiliate links in there. I please ask you, when you purchase your chair, please consider using my links. It really helps support this channel, keeps these videos like this going, or you guys can donate to the channel via PayPal or YouTube Super as well. And please like, subscribe, comment to the video. It is my dream to hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm gonna niche you know, content in chairs, right? It's super niche. Uh, so yeah, subscribers have been pretty uh, sparse. But last year's video got like 350,000 views. So if each of you subscribe to the channel, we would be way past that. So really, really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. All that will be linked below. If you're five foot three or under, let me give some overarching advice before we jump into the chairs. The first is gonna be avoid headrests. I'm not saying avoid chairs with headrests, but if you have to pay for it or it costs additional, don't buy it. Oftentimes you won't reach it, and if you do, it'll just get in the way. Your head will hit somewhere like here, and it's not gonna be very comfortable. And on a chair like this, you can save $20, $30 by not doing that. Instead, I recommend if you wanna tilt back and you, wanna, you want something to rest your head on, just slouch a little bit in your chair and rest your head on the top back of the chair. It's not gonna be as comfortable. You can put a blanket or a pillow there to make it a little more comfortable. The second is going to be, I've noticed a lot of people in this height range often end up having dangling legs that kind of dangle off the side of your chair just because your legs aren't long enough to hit the floor. And there's a free way to bypass this and two paid ways. I kind of don't need to talk about the free way, you guys already probably do this, which is to curl up inside of your chair. But I, no I note this because as I go through these chairs, I'll tell you which ones you're able to do this on and which ones you are not. For example, on this chair here, you would not be able to do that because of mesh and the hard edges on the side. There are two paid ways you can bypass this though. The first is the simplest, although a little bit more expensive, is to buy a footrest with adjustable height. And the reason I say adjustable height is because, you know, if you get one that's flat and the cheapo $10 one, it might not be tall enough for you. This one here is the one I recommend for my shorter friends because each of those clicks is in another adjustable height and you can have it angled like this if that's the way you like to sit or you can even adjust the top side four times here and have a super duper tall footrest. The second paid option to bypass this is that you can actually buy a shorter cylinder. So you can have these chairs go a little bit lower and that is gonna be a little bit more tedious to do because it's not that easy to get legs off the chair and to replace the existing cylinder. By the way, a cylinder is the thing that moves your chair up and down down here. It's that big long pipe in the middle. Uh, so you guys can replace that. Again, it's gonna be the more tedious option. With that being said, let's jump into the chairs. We'll start from the lowest price and work our way to the highest price in the budget chair tier. So I tested a bunch of chairs under 100 bucks and the Amazon Basics PU leather chair came out on top. This is my number one pick. And the reason why is because there are soft edges everywhere on the back and on the seat, allowing you to really spread out without digging your uh, triceps, digging into the sides. And also because the seat pad was the thickest of all of those. Now, this is not meant to be an everyday 
eight hour plus sitting chair because this cushion will flatten. Also, if you're somebody who's on the wider end, this chair isn't that wide. And so if you're someone who tucks both legs and you're wider, you may not fit quite well in this chair. If you're a vanilla sitter, this chair could work out for you. Now, if you are an everyday sitter, eight plus hours, I recommend you incre increase your budget to about $150 for this chair here. This is a Sihu M18, and you can remove this headrest really easily, you just rip it out and then that's it. Um, the reason why I recommend this if you're an everyday sitter for multiple hours is because the seat cushion is absolutely fantastic. This thing is really, really dense. I don't imagine it flattening anytime soon. Just keep in mind is that if you're a vanilla sitter, this one might not be for you because the seat cushion is really deep. I'm five foot six and even then the front edge of the cushion touches the back of my calf. And you might ask, well, why is that bad? Well, because if your legs are dangling and it's making hard contact with the back of your calf, you could lose circulation in your legs and it just is uncomfortable. So this is really for people who like to tuck both legs inside of the chair. In between here is the Staples hiking chair. This is a super popular chair. Many people swear by it. It's $180, but it's an all mesh chair. And with any budget mesh chair, I give strong words of caution. I believe that you should be under 150 pounds because if you're over that, the mesh will uh, sag a lot faster and oftentimes the mesh is not covered by warranty, which we'll see over there in that $300 chair soon. But uh, people swear by it, it's a pretty small chair. So again, if you're wider, it may not be the best fit for you. And if you're someone who tucks, that's gonna be a no-go there because the hard edges on mesh chairs are often going to be just really uncomfortable if you like to even do single leg tuck, especially double leg tuck. Now, moving to $200 here, sorry, this is the Clatina Mellet. If you are someone who likes to curl up in your chair or your vanilla sitter, I recommend this one here. It is by far, so far on this list, the most adjustable chair. It's got an excellent tilt mechanism. It's hard to explain, watch the individual review for it. I'm not gonna get into it all here, but it feels fantastic. Uh, and because the seat pan can slide out, it's gonna be great. Uh, and It's pretty shallow too in its normal state, which means it's gonna be good for vanilla sitters, but because it can pull out a bit further, if you want more space in the chair, you can also easily tuck into the chair. Although I imagine at this height range, you'll be able to tuck into it in its just regular form. Keep in mind though, that when you pull out the seat pan all the way, it does create a significant gap in the back. So if you scooch back all the way, you can feel some of that on your butt. But typically, uh, a lot of people I think who curl up in their chair like this are scooched a little more forward. So you probably won't feel that gap when sitting in this chair. Next up on this list is the Branch Ergonomic Chair. I believe this one is about $300. This was my number one chair budget chair pick in that $300 price range. And this chair is just fantastic. It's got a ton of adjustments, just like the Clatina Mellet, except this is where we start to see warranty. This chair, they offer a seven year warranty on the entire chair. And unlike the Clatina Mellet, when you pull the seat pan out on this, you don't feel any gap in the back whatsoever. So if you're someone who scooches all the way back in your chair, this could be an excellent option. Also, just like with the Clatina Mellet, the seat pan is pretty shallow. You saw that when I sat in it earlier, I had a ton of space in, in between the gap of my, my calf and so it's gonna be great for shorter folks and for people who like to sit vanilla or cross-legged inside of your chair. Moving now to the new house Ergo 3D. This is, I prefer this mesh chair over the Staples Hiken, although it is close to double the price. But when you sit in this chair, it just feels like a hammock. It feels really good. Now, Newhouse offers a five-year warranty on this chair, but keep in mind that just like the Staples Hiken, the mesh is not warrantied. Okay, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. Oh, but with the Staples Hiken, I believe they've got an excellent return policy, and that's gonna be the difference between the Newhouse and the Staples Hiken. So something to note there. Um, on this chair, again, if you're someone who likes to tuck, this is gonna be a no-go because the hard edges on the side. And if you're somebody who uh, is over 150 pounds, again, a no-go because the mesh will sag faster on these more budget tier mesh chairs than on other chairs like the higher end Herman Miller Aerons and things like that. Finally on this chair list is going to be the Onda Seat Kaiser 3. This comes in exactly at about $400. There's only two sizes for this chair. It's the large and the extra large. Now I typically don't like racing style gaming chairs, but if you like them, then I think this is gonna be this is my number one pick for a racing style gaming chair. And the reason why is because the back is more open. A lot of racing style gaming chairs have very curved backs and it causes you to turtle inside of your chair like this. This one has a wide open back allowing you to spread that chest out. And most importantly is gonna be the seat. Again, 
on a lot of racing style gaming chairs, they're gonna have really hard metal bolsters here that prevent you from opening that leg up. There is no such thing. It's soft all around. And if you're a normal sitter, a vanilla sitter, it's probably not gonna be for you because again, seat depth is really deep. It's gonna hit the back of your calves. Your legs are gonna be dangling unless you get a foot rest. But if you're someone who likes to curl up in your chair, who likes to double tuck, you can definitely do that. If you're somebody who likes an oversized chair, I I've noticed that I did a sizing guide uh, ch uh, review with um, another racing style gaming chair, and I had a lot of people who were in that five foot six and under come in, and they were all saying that they really liked oversized chairs. And they actually picked the extra large version of that chair. So if that's you, if you want a chair that feels really big, that you can curl up in, you can even nap in this chair if you really wanted, the on the Kaiser 3 large size is going to be the one that I recommend. If you're 5 foot 3 or under, these are the chairs I recommend in that $400 to $1000 price range, and we'll start with the lowest price and move our way to the highest price in this price tier. Starting with the used Herman Miller Aeron. Now this chair, the Aeron comes in three sizes, A, B, or C. The one I recommend for this height range is size A. And it's got a headrest here. This is not made by Herman Miller Aaron, by the way, or Herman Miller, by the way. You can ignore that. Remember, please don't get a headrest at this height range. I don't think it's gonna help you very much. Now, used Herman Miller Aarons can be found on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for around $450. But finding a size A is going to be more tricky because again, size A is for shorter folks, smaller folks, and most of these Aerons were sold to offices and they bought size B to fit the most average height. And then the companies basically offload and sell all those chairs and dump them. Somebody picks them up and sells them used for about 450 bucks. So finding a size A is going to be a bit trickier. It might take you some time, but expect to pay about $450. These things are built like tanks. They're probably going to be like 15 plus years old, but you can't, you wouldn't be able to tell on most of them because they're just built super duper well. Keep in mind that because you're buying on Marketplace or something, there's no return policy, no warranty. So the chair you get is the one you get. I've got a buying guide that you can check out. Uh, if you want to make sure that you get a good one that's been cleaned and sanitized, no booty juices, no body odors, nothing like that, you can check out my friend's Crandall office. They do sell them at a premium because they offer 12 year warranty, free returns, and of course they clean the entire chair, replacing parts. That's gonna cost you about seven, eight hundred dollars, and again, I'll link that option. Moving to our next one is the Steelcase Amia. Now, buying this new from Steelcase costs you about a thousand dollars. However, again, my friends at Crandall Office, they sell a remanufactured version of the Amia. Remanufactured basically means they went and found old Amias, um, used Amias, and they cleaned them up, they refurbished them, they sanitized them, reupholstered them, the whole nine yards, and they sell them for about $600, five, no, $500. And you get free returns and 12-year warranty. So it's an excellent value. I think the Steelcase Amia has the best seat in the business. It feels really, really great. Soft edges on the side, great for tuckers, regular sitters, goes low enough. Just a really solid chair. And yeah, almost every option you get is going to, even if you get new from Steelcase, free returns, 12-year warranty, but it's gonna cost you a little bit more at a thousand bucks. This is a chair from Hayworth. Hayworth is again, another US-based company, just like Steelcase. They've got excellent customer service, offer 12-year warranty, free return policy, and this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal chair. For the price at about $500, you get a ton of options. You get great lumbar support. It actually has the ability to tilt forward, which is the cheapest chair for new in this price range, you can do that. Now, tilting forward can be good, especially if you're shorter, to really help you plant those feet on the floor. It can also be good for helping you get out of a chair if you have bad knees, a bad back, things like that. Just a really, really great value for this chair. Uh, again, 500 bucks. Moving next to the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022. Now, if you are a vanilla sitter, I do not recommend this chair because the seat cushion is just way too deep. Now, if you are a tucker, a double tucker, then you might be able to go for it, but this is where things get a little confusing. This comes in three sizes, a regular, a small, a regular, and XL. And I did testing for this chair and two of the participants were under five foot four, I believe. And because of that, uh, I thought they would pick this one, the smallest one. But every single person, all four people, picked the biggest one, the XL size. And they said the reason was because the seat cushion was softer, and I think they just liked the idea of a chair kind of just hugging them. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I put the small one here just so you could see the size reference relative to the other chairs here, just so you could see how big this thing is. The XL is a lot bigger than this one. Um, I just thought I'd point it out there. 
uh, the main drawback of the Titan Evo 2022 is that the uh, even though they offer a five-year warranty, I've heard the return policy it can be the return process can be a little iffy. The seat cushion is also really firm, so if you want something softer and you want a big racing style gaming chair, the Kaiser 3 that I showed in the budget is going to be my choice for racing style gaming chair. Next up is the Steelcase Leap V2. This is an iconic chair and brand new. It's going to cost you $1,300, so that's the next price tier. But again, Crandall Office, they sell this in two forms that fit this price tier or price requirement. The first is going to be a remanufactured Leap V2. That's when, again, they take used Leaps, they clean them up, sanitize them, reupholster, re-cushion, all that stuff, and they sell it for about $600 and 12-year warranty, free return policy. But you can also get one that's authorized return. An authorized return means that somebody bought it from Steelcase for $1,300. And then they said, you know what, I don't like it, and they returned it back to Steelcase. Kernel Office picks those up and sells them at a discount. And if you want it like that, it's basically brand new. It costs $1,000. So uh, again, 12-year warranty, uh, free return policy. So the Leap V2, again, you can get it used in two forms, remanufactured, which is an old one that they've basically took and gave it a makeover, or basically new one that was returned to Steelcase and Steelcase needed a way to offload them. So, and that's for a thousand bucks. Moving our way to the Herman Miller sale. This is a phenomenal little chair with an excellent seat cushion, lumbar support, feels amazing, looks really, really cool as well, super stylish chair. Herman Miller, US-based company, excellent customer service, 12-year warranty. They used to do free returns, but I think I read a policy where they changed that. Now there is a return fee, so something to keep in mind. Um, this one comes in at about 950. This one that I have here is the gaming version, and for some reason the gaming version now costs over a thousand. It's a thousand twenty, but the non-gaming version costs nine fifty-five, and it's weird because the non-gaming and the gaming are exactly the same. It's just the colors that have changed. So save a little bit of money, buy the non-gaming version. It's a little bit cheaper, but the exact same chair. This is the Hayworth Zodi, a very solid chair. Ton of options on this chair. The seat cushion feels really good, and Hayworth offers. Free return policy, excellent excellent customer service, 12-year warranty. And it's also got that forward tilt, just like the Soji. I forgot to mention that the Herman Miller sale also has the forward tilt. And these two chairs are very similarly priced. This one is going to be, the Zodi is $965, whereas the sale is $955. Uh, this one has a wider back. It's got mesh, and so it gives you a little bit more um, of that traditional feel kind of bouncing in the chair. And it's got a little bit more flex than the sale does. The sale has these kind of hard edges at the side that prevent a little bit of flexing inside of this chair compared to the Zodi whose back totally flexes and moves with you. If you are five foot three or under and you are a rich biatch, these are the best chairs money can buy at $1,000 plus. We start with the Hayward Zodi LX coming at $1,110. The, the Zodi LX is different from the regular Hayward Zodi in that it doesn't have a mesh back. It's got a cloth back with a lot of cushion on the back. This chair feels solid, really well made. The seat pan is nice and shallow for the shorter folks, but you can also pull it out if you want to double tuck or single tuck inside of your chair. But what's unique about this chair compared to every other chair on this list is that it's got a front perch mode. Now, a lot of chairs on this list can do a front tilt, and that's when you can tilt forward, get your feet planted into the ground. It's a really great feature, especially those for those who are shorter or want to get closer to what they're doing on their desk. But the perch mode takes it one step further where you can really lean forward. And I said that this chair is a great pairing with standing desks because you're able to go from that perch mode where you're basically kind of standing up but actually sitting in a chair, and you can come out of it and stand up at a standing desk like the one I have over here. But you can do that without messing with the height adjustment of the chair. As always, Hayward chairs come with great customer service, 12-year warranty, free return policy, fantastic choice. Moving on, we have the Steelcase Carmen. This chair is a brand new chair from Steelcase released this year in 2023, and I called it my favorite mesh chair hands down. Now, some people who try this chair said that they don't like it because the build quality isn't quite the same as the Aeron, but I think it was purposed that way for two reasons. One is because they're trying to crush Aeron in the price sector, so this thing is a lot more affordable than the Aeron over there, which is going to be $1,800. This chair is about $1,170. Um, the base model, not this exact one here, but the base model is $1,170 with the fully adjustable arms and the lumbar. But the frame wasn't meant to be super rigid. The unique thing about this chair is that 
You know, most chairs I talked about, you can't double tuck because your ankles will be hitting a really hard, solid edge. On this chair, it's nice and flat, nice and wide. You can actually double tuck inside of this chair. And most importantly, the frame is super duper flexible, meaning you get maximum movement both in the seat and in the backrest of this chair. I think it is a one of my favorite, one of my favorite top pick, top new chairs of 2023. Love this chair. Steel case, of course, comes with the 12-year warranty, free return policy, excellent customer service, except for if you're in the, in the EU, then I believe steel case has reduced the warranty down to five years. Next up is the Hayworth Fern. Now this is a headrest not made by Hayworth. This is uh, an adapter made by Herman Miller. Uh, do not get this. Again, as always, don't buy the headrests that come with these chairs or that are made for these chairs because you're not really gonna be able to hit it. What's great about the Hayworth Fern is that, again, when the seat cushion is inside, it's nice and shallow for the short folks. The chair goes nice and low as well, but you can also pull it out and get double tuck if you want to do that. What's nice is that because the backrest is so tall and then there's cushion on this back here, you can actually put your head, if you're shorter, shorter. you can actually rest it on top of here and there's actually a decent amount of cushion. Sometimes I find myself slouching because the one at home, I don't have a headrest on it. The one I have at home, I end up slouching in it and resting my head on the top of the Back. That's how tall this backrest goes. Um, Hayworth chair, again, 12 year warranty, excellent customer service, free returns, a solid choice. A Hayworth Burn is probably my number two, uh, very close to number, tied for number one pick, uh, the Hayworth Fern here. Next up is the Steelcase Leap V2. Now this one is a remanufactured one from Crandall Office, who I already talked about in their previous tiers. I don't have a brand new Steelcase Leap on me, which is, I, this is a stand-in. Um, a brand new Steelcase Leap V2 is gonna be $1,300 from Steelcase. And again, Steelcase 12-year warranty, free returns, Excellent customer service. I'm not gonna go over it all again because I already talked about it in the previous tiers, but Steelcase Sleep V2, uh, probably number two best known chair, best sold chair in the world. Moving over here, this is the Herman Miller Mira 2. This is a phenomenal chair. Again, it's an all mesh chair. Unlike the Carmen, this isn't going to be as flexible, but it's definitely gonna be more open, a little less rigid than the Herman Miller Aeron here. One recommendation that I have to make is that please only get the mutter, butter, butterfly, the butterfly suspension back. Do not buy the polymer whatever. The polymer is essentially a really hard plastic. I sat in on both of these in a showroom and the polymer back was so hard, it was really uncomfortable. The uh, butterfly mesh back has a little bit of padding, a little bit of cushion here to block you from the hard plastic in the back. And this is, the setup that I recommend. Uh, really good chair. The seat can actually curl and uncurl, which is really nice because if you have shorter legs, you can make it so that it curls in and it won't get into, won't dig into the back of those legs. Uh, in general though, you have a lot of good choices when it comes to mesh chairs. One of the other benefits of this chair is that it's about $1,400 compared to an $1,800 Aeron. So um, in Herman Miller, you get the 12-year um, warranty, excellent customer service. And as I noted in the other tier chairs, I believe Herman Miller is now charging for returns, so something to keep in mind. The next chair on this list is a brand new Herman Miller Aeron. Now in this size area, you want to get a size A. The one I have here is a size B, but this is where, because um, this is the only one I have on hand, but this is what the remastered one looks like. You can tell that it looks different than the one I had before, the used Aerons, because Herman Miller updated their Aerons back in, I think, what, 2017? I forget exactly when. But there's some things to note. One is that the gaming Aeron, the gaming Herman Miller Aeron, and the uh, non-gaming Herman Miller Aeron are exactly the same. The only difference is their colors. But for this height category, you cannot buy a gaming Aeron because they don't come in size A. They only come in size B or C. So for this one, you're gonna have to get a non-gaming Aeron. The only difference is that the gaming Aeron has like a black version. This is the non-gaming Aeron. It's more of a graphite, a little more of a darker gray. Um, also with the non-gaming Aerons, you can get the silver white gray finish, and I think that one looks the most stunning. If I had a choice, I would have picked that, that one. Um, this is the headrest, again, from Atlas Headrest. It's similar to the one you see over there. Uh, do not buy a headrest. It will not go low enough for you, I believe. Uh, so yeah, this is the Herman Miller Aeron. And then finally, moving on to my favorite chair of all time. If you can't tell, I've got a little poster of it over there. It's new additional artwork to the studio. This is the Herman Miller Gaming and Body. Now, 
unlike the Iran and the sale I talked about earlier, and if you don't weren't there for that, you don't need to, but essentially Herman Miller created a bunch of chairs or called a bunch of their existing chairs gaming chairs. It's exactly the same except they just changed the colors. The gaming and body, they did almost the same thing except they did change up the cushioning on the gaming and body compared to their non-gaming and body. And I will say, and I'm gonna do this in a future video, don't buy the non-gaming and body. Get the gaming and body. I bought a brand new and body to test against the gaming and body and I, a non-gaming and body over there to test against the gaming and body and unanimously everybody chose the gaming and body. It just has more cushion, it's more comfortable, the shoulders especially back here, it's not gonna be as important if you're shorter, but the shoulders are a little bit more open uh, compared to being really turned in, curved in. Um, and in terms of price, they're about the same. Uh, so you wanna get a gaming and body, not the non-gaming and body. Actually, as a matter of fact, I think the, not, the gaming body is actually cheaper than the non-gaming anyway. And again, because the backrest is so tall, you don't need a headrest, you can lean back and you can probably rest your head here because this is all cushioned up here. My favorite chair of all time, uh, really close to the Hayworth Fern in terms of which one is my favorite pick, but Herman Miller, excellent customer service, 12 year warranty. They are, I believe, charging for returns at this point, so that's something that you should keep in mind. But that sums it up for my shorter friends at five foot three and under. I hope you guys are able to pick a chair. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you picked. Also, sometimes short Shorter folks like to go with more active seating chairs. Don't forget to go to that section in the video using the timestamp where I'll talk about my favorite active seating chairs in 2023. If you're five foot four to six foot two, congratulations. You are the demographic that chair manufacturers are building their chairs for because you make up the majority of the population. So that means more money for them. Now, there are some caveats. Some chairs are gonna be better for the higher, taller end in this height range, and some chairs are gonna be better for the shorter end in this height range, and I'll point out those caveats as we move along. These are the budget chairs, and we'll work our way from the lowest price to the highest price in this price range, starting with the Amazon Basics PU Leather Chair. This is the best chair that I found under $100. I compared a bunch of them on Amazon, and this one was by far the number one pick. The seat cushion was thicker than all the other ones. The backrest was better designed. It's soft all around, allowing you to open those arms up, and the armrests are pretty soft as well. Now, there are a couple caveats of this chair. The first is going to be that even though the seat cushion was thicker than the other chairs, I can feel that it's gonna flatten pretty quickly. So if you're heavier or you're an aggressive everyday sitter for eight plus hours, this chair will not be for you. I highly recommend you bump up your budget a little bit and move to this chair here. More on that in a second. Uh, another thing is that if you're on the wider end, this chair might not be for you. I'm five foot six, 176 pounds, and I feel a bit claustrophobic in this chair. So if you're slender, then yeah, you might wanna sit in it, and because it's more narrow, it's not gonna be the best for double tuckers, so something to also keep in mind. Now, for a little less than double, this is the Sihu M18, and compared to the Amazon Basics chair, this seat cushion is phenomenal. It's thick, it's dense, it's deep, it's wide. I really like this chair. Um, the lumbar also goes really low, so I think it's gonna be great for anybody in this uh, height range here. Just keep in mind that if you are on the shorter end, I would say five foot four to five foot five, keep in mind that because the seat depth is so deep, if you're a vanilla sitter, it might not be the best for you unless you pair it with a footrest. And because it's so deep, it might make contact with the back of your calf. And if you're wondering why is that such a big deal, it's because over time you might lose circulation and you might just be uncomfortable in this chair. Otherwise, phenomenal chair, 150 bucks. Yeah, I really like it. Next up is the Sihu M90D. And this is gonna be for the taller folks in this height range. And the reason why is because the backrest can actually ratchet up. Oh, well, it was already ratcheted up three times. And so you can get a higher backrest height on this thing. The seat cushion is the exact same as the M18. Super thick, super dense, feels really good. Uh, unlike the M18 though, you can't adjust this lumbar support. It's one of those that kind of works on a, not it's not spring, but it's more like um, it just kind of bounces back based on how much pressure you put on it. This is gonna be a more upright chair as well. So if you're somebody who really likes to sit upright, the backrest definitely pushes you forward just a little bit more compared to some other chairs which has you lean back a tiny bit inside 
of your chair. Uh, when I reviewed this chair, which was, I believe, two years ago now, um, this, M this I blasted this headrest. I said, this is the most pitiful headrest I've ever seen on a chair. Uh, Sihu watched that video and they actually upgraded the headrest. Many comments said, hey, they changed the headrest out. Uh, Sihu actually let me know that they watched my video and they're gonna do updates to their chairs based on it. So uh, yeah, I, and from what I hear, the headrest is much better now uh, on the M90D. Now, in between here, there is a chair, but I don't have it here in the studio. It's the Staples Hiken chair. It is an all-mesh chair, and with all-mesh chairs, I always have a word of caution, especially when you get into the budget tier, that if you're over 150 pounds, I don't recommend an all-mesh chair. Sa mesh sags quicker, uh, especially budget mesh, and so if you're over 150 pounds, it's gonna sag even quicker. Now, the reason why the Hiken is here is because it is People swear by it. People love this chair. Uh, my son tested all my chairs. He's six years old, and he decided to take that one. That's why it's not here. Um, the couple notes, though, in addition, I'm five foot six, 176 pounds. When I sat in that chair, it felt really small. So I'm gonna recommend that, yeah, if you're uh, a little bit wider, please don't get that chair. Um, yeah, if you're heavier, you're generally wider too. So yeah, don't really recommend that chair if you get into the taller, wider end. I think one of the benefits though, the Hiken, before I move on, is that uh, the war warranty or the return policy is really good from Staples, so that's something to keep in mind. This is the Clatina Mellet. This is 200 bucks, and of all the chairs I've talked about so far, this has by far the most adjustability, like by far. And it is a phenomenal chair. The tilt mechanism is excellent. The chair feels really great. The seat cushion is really great as well. It's really shallow, so if you're on the shorter end, it fits really well. And the seat pan can slide out if you're taller. Just a, one big caveat though is that if you're really tall, you know, you get to five foot, eight and up, uh, then keep in mind, and I know you're like, that's not really tall. I know, but I'm saying five foot eight to six foot two, okay? Uh, I get all these comments all the time. They're like, oh, it's not short, that's not tall. Anyways, I get it, I understand. Um, so the seat pan, if you pull it all the way out, it creates a significant gap back here, and if you're someone who scooches all the way back inside of your chair, your ass will basically be hanging out, and you can feel the cushion kind of on your butt cheeks. So if that's you, then you might want to avoid this chair, but for the adjustability, the price, you just can't beat it. This is a phenomenal chair. Now, if you are somebody who likes to slide the seat pan all the way out, and you don't want to feel any kind of gap, the Branch Ergonomic Chair is my number one chair in that $300 price range. This thing is 300 bucks and it is phenomenal. The seat pan is fantastic. It's got just as much adjustability as the Clatina. The tilt mechanism is not nearly as good as the Clatina, but it's still pretty good. Uh, and then the biggest thing is that when you slide the seat pan out, did I already say this? I can't remember. But you won't feel any kind of gap in the back whatsoever. This chair feels phenomenal. And also the biggest thing is that this has a seven year warranty on the entire chair. There's no mesh, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think it's a really good value. Branch knocked it out of the park with this chair. Really, really like this one. Moving on to the new house Ergo 3D. This thing is, I believe, $360, $370. It's again an all mesh chair, so the same notes as the Hiken. If you're over 150 pounds, I don't recommend it. If you're a tucker or a double tucker, I don't recommend it because it's got hard edges on the sides. Now, this chair offers, I believe, a five year warranty. But keep in mind that the mesh is not warrantied. If it sags, that's considered uh, da daily wear and tear, I forget what it's called, normal wear, and so they're not going to warranty that. In terms of just pure feel though, I much prefer this chair, the New House Ergo 3D, over the Hiken. This thing feels like you're sitting in a hammock. Every time I sit on it, I'm really impressed by the way it feels. I really like the way I, I feel inside of this chair. Uh, in terms of height range, I don't think it's gonna hit all the way to six foot two. My personal recommendation would be five foot four to probably about five foot 11 because the headrest doesn't go all that high. And just because, the, because of the harder edges here, it might dig into the shoulders a little bit differently if you start getting into that six foot height range. Final chair, the most expensive on this list is going to be the Honda Seat Kaiser 3. This chair comes in two different sizes, a large and an XL. The XL is gonna be bumped into the next price tier because I believe it's a $450. This one here, the large, is $400. Now, I don't necessarily always recommend racing style gaming chairs, uh, but when I sat in the Andesi Kaiser XL, uh, Kaiser 3, this feels phenomenal. The seat cushion is really dense, it's really thick. A lot of budget racing style gaming chairs, I've sat on, a bunch of friends have them, okay? So I've sat on a bunch of them. Ooh. <laughs> 
and they all flatten and they feel terrible. The Kaiser 3 seat pad is super thick, super dense. It's not going to flatten anytime soon. And the best parts are going to be that there are no hard edges on the side. So you can really spread them. You can double curl in your chair. And the back is much more open design compared to other, again, more budget racing style gaming chairs. A lot of them make you turtle in your chair. That's not the case with the Kaiser 3 at all. If you're on the shorter end, and I say shorter, you know, relatively, okay? So if you're up to about five foot 10, I recommend the large and if you're taller than 5 foot 10 I recommend the extra large and again this will be in the mid tier which I'll pull out in just a second. If you're five foot four to six foot two, as I said before, there are so many solid chairs in that $400 to $1,000 price point. So we'll start with the lowest price and work our way to the highest. There are so many options that there are actually two chairs hiding back here. I couldn't fit it all in one shot. I'll bring those out when it's time. But let's start with the used Herman Miller Aeron. In this height range, you're probably gonna wanna get a size A, B, or C, depending on your height. If you're five foot four, five foot five, probably gonna be good with a size A. If you're five foot six to about five foot 10, five foot 11, I recommend a size B. And if you're five foot 10, five foot 11, all the way to six foot two, I recommend a size C. Now you can find these pretty regularly on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist for around 450 bucks. And if you want a headrest, Herman Miller doesn't believe in headrests, but there's a company called Atlas Headrest. They make headrests that are a one-to-one -one match with the mesh material, look, and color of the plastic of these chairs. I strongly recommend them. You can use my code Entourage for them. And that's gonna bring your overall price from 450 to about $650. Next up is the Andesit Kaiser 3, both in the large and XL size. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there who are like, oh, racing style gaming chairs are crap. And I get it. I understand why. There's big turtling issues. There's hard bolsters on the side. People are like, they're not very ergonomic. Yes, I get that. But this one is, I think, a bit built very differently. The sides are soft and there's no hard edges. It may look like it's raised, but these are totally soft. More budget style racing gaming chairs have really terrible cushions that flatten out over time. And this one is not nearly as turtled or grip shoe like this compared to other racing style gaming chairs. And then lounging in a chair, leaning all the way back, that is a fantastic seating experience. It takes pressure off of that lower back. And if you want a racing style gaming chair, the Kaiser 3 XL, the Kaiser 3 is my number one choice. If you're five foot four and you're a vanilla sitter, meaning your feet on the ground, I don't recommend this chair. If you're a tucker or a double tucker, yeah, this could be a viable option. And if you're five foot ten or above, you can get the XL version of this chair. Keep in mind that relative to these other chairs, the warranty and return policy are not going to be nearly as good as some of these other chairs. Moving to this one here, this is the Steelcase EMEA, but brand new, it's gonna cost a thousand bucks, and you're kind of wondering, wow, did we jump price already? Not quite, so new is a thousand bucks, but you can also get it used, or what they call remanufactured from a company called Crandall Office. The Steelcase EMEA is actually my favorite Steelcase chair because of its price point. Remanufactured, this thing comes in at about $500. It doesn't look very sexy, but the seat is phenomenal. Like the seat is so good and the back is soft all around, which makes me believe that it's gonna be great for shorter folks and taller folks. No hard edges on the backs whatsoever. And the wonderful thing about Crandall Office as well as buying new from Steelcase is that you're gonna get free returns 12-year warranty, both from Crandall Office and from Steelcase, although if in Europe, EU, I believe they reduced it down to five years, something to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it's a phenomenal chair, great return policy, great warranty, whether you buy remanufactured, used, or new from Steelcase themselves. Next up, this one is the Hayward Soji. I believe this is 500, 550? I'm sorry, I'm blanking on prices. I think it's about 500. The Hayward Soji is a phenomenal chair from Hayward. Uh, I think it's got a great seat cushion, just fits really good overall. It's got a pretty decent lumbar support as well. Um, with Hayworth, you're gonna get excellent customer service, 12 year warranty and free returns. So really great chair in this price point. I really like it. I think uh, if you start getting taller into that six foot one, six foot two category, it could be hit or miss for you because these edges are a bit hard, they're exposed. Next up is the Titan Evo 2022. Now, if you're into racing style gaming chairs, just like with the Kaiser 3, you're gonna get a flat bottom with soft cushions. So no hard edges on the bottom and the back is much more open. So if you want that, that's available to you. It also looks gorgeous. It's probably the most beautiful racing style gaming chair on the market right now. Ton of different options and you can skin them up even further customization if you want. Some things to note about the sizes is that from a testing that I did, uh, if you're five foot five and under, I don't recommend this chair if you're a vanilla sitter. 
Okay, so if you're a vanilla sitter, the small is probably best for five foot six up to about five foot eight. And then the regular is probably gonna be good for five foot eight to about six foot. And then the XL is probably gonna be good for five foot 11 to six foot two. And I put a little crossover there is because it depends on how much space you want inside of your chair. If you're a double crosser, then you can get whatever size you want. It's really confusing because when I did a sizing test of this chair, some of the girls who are five foot four or under, they still prefer this one here. This is the XL. They prefer this because they said the seat was actually softer compared to the other two sizes. I talked to Secret Lab. They said no. They use the same seat cushion in all of them. But that is the main drawback of this chair is that the seat cushion is very firm compared to the Kaiser 3, which is why the Kaiser 3 is my pick. It's also cheaper, but the seat cushion is much softer compared to the Evo 2022. Keep in mind, just like the Kaiser, the return policy and the warranty, I believe you get five years warranty and the return policy is a little bit iffy. I've heard people have had a hard time returning their chairs. Although from my tracker, from my affiliate tracker, people have been successful in returning their chairs. So something to keep in mind if you decide to pick this one up. Moving now to the Steelcase Leap V2. Buying this new actually hits the top uh, price tier at $1,300. So the reason why this one is here is because you can buy it used in two different ways. Um, Three, well, you can buy it used on a marketplace, so that definitely can do it. I've got a video guide where you can do that. The second is going to be buying a remanufactured Leap V2 from a company called Crandall Office. Uh, what, they can, what they do is they take used Leap V2s, they um, sanitize, clean everything, change the cushions, change the fabric, and go the whole nine yards to get this thing really, really nice. And I believe that costs about $600. And then the other option is you can buy it as an authorized return. Authorized return basically means uh, somebody bought a Leap V2 from Steelcase, they decided they didn't like it, they returned it within the 14 day return policy, and then the Crandall Office basically goes and picks those up and sells it to us at a discount. So, uh, and that one costs a thousand bucks. And again, the great thing about Crandall Office is that you get 12 year warranty and free returns. So yeah, Leap V2, iconic chair, all Steelcase chairs, you know, some of the best chairs in the world. So, Steelcase Gesture. Again, another chair, if you bought it brand new, it'd be $1,400, but you can actually get this remanufactured, to reemphasize, remanufactured means they went out, bought used chairs, they re-sanitized, re-upholstered, did all the whole nine yards to get it looking great, and they sell it for, I believe it's $900 remanufactured, which is, and again, 12-year warranty, free return policy, compared to 1,400 bucks, really good chair, best arms in the business, uh, really solid chair, especially as you go taller in heights. If you're taller, I do recommend the additional lumbar support. If you're shorter, by shorter I mean five foot seven and below, don't get the additional lumbar support. It gets in the way more than anything. But if you're above five foot seven, get the additional lumbar support. I think it'll help you out. Moving next to nine hundred dollars as well is the is the Asus Destrier. Now this is a chair, I don't even know if I'm on frame right now, so I'll, let me sit here so I make sure I'm on frame. The Asus Destrier, I reviewed this chair and I thought it was gonna be a pretty terrible chair, but I sat in it and I was blown away by the way it felt. I think they did a phenomenal chair, a phenomenal job with this chair, and you can no you'll notice that it's the second uh, me mesh chair in this list. And that's part of the reason why I like this chair so much is because there aren't a lot of chairs that are all mesh, that I trust the mesh, because a lot of the budget ones sag. This one feels pretty taut, pretty well made. And a headrest, and the chair locks, right? Like I know that's a, 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 like a lot of things, but there really aren't many chairs like this. And I think Asus did a good job on this chair. Yes, it is expensive, 900 bucks. I got so much crap in the comments in my review of this. Even though I genuinely like it, I understand people's concerns. They're like, it's way too expensive, it looks really cheap, and yeah, the plastic isn't the highest quality plastic, but when you compare it to Herman Miller's Vantum chair, uh, that's uh, their uh, Herman Miller's attempt to make a like a ground up gaming chair. I mean, it's the same quality plastic, right? So. I get where the complaints are coming from. I'm just saying that they're trying to match the industry standard of what other people are making in this price range and calling it gaming chair. Um, I just think it feels fantastic. The big drawback is going to be the, uh, I believe a lot of people you can buy it from Micro Center or something, and the return policy there is pretty decent from what I remember, but it's the warranty. You only get a one year warranty, which is pretty pitiful compared to all these other chairs that are cheaper and you're getting 12 year warranty on a lot of these chairs. Now, the two next chairs here are hidden behind. Let me pull these forward. The next one is the Herman Miller Sale. This is a fantastic chair. It comes in at about 955. 
This is the gaming version. The gaming version, they bumped the price up to 1,020. I don't know why, because it's literally the exact same as the non-gaming version. So if you're gonna get the sale, save 50 bucks by getting the non-gaming version. Just, it, the only difference is the colors. It's literally the same chair. The seat cushion on this is phenomenal. Like really, really excellent. The back feels really, really great as well. Also on the non-gaming version, you can get additional lumbar support if you want. You can't get that on the gaming ones. The back feels great. And the, and the only con, the only drawback is that the edges here are pretty hard. So I think if you're starting to creep up into that five foot 11 plus height, this may not feel as comfortable for you. But for anybody who's five foot four, all the way up to five foot 10, five foot 11, this is an excellent choice. With Herman Miller, you're gonna get the excellent 12 year warranty, excellent customer service. I've noticed that Herman Miller doesn't offer free returns anymore. Are they, are they, they charge something for returns. I don't know if that's exactly true, but let me check their policy. I'll, I'll put it a little thing here if that is confirmed, but yeah, uh, Herman Miller sale, really excellent chair. Then moving to the last chair on this list, this is the Hayworth Zodi. This is a phenomenal chair as well. Excellent seat cushion. It's got some additional uh, options as well. It can forward tilt. It's got this dual lumbar support where you can have one side push in more than the other. And it's just a really great chair. Some people swear by the Zodi over the more popular Hayworth Fern because of the way that this back grips you and because it's mesh, it's very, very breathable as well. Phenomenal chair. Hey with Hayworth, it's an American company, so you're gonna get the excellent customer service, 12 year warranty, free returns, phenomenal chair. Donut break, I've been recording for like three hours. If your height is between five foot four and six foot two, and you are a rich biatch, you want the best chair that money can buy, these are the best chairs ranging from $1,000 all the way up, and we start with the Hayward Zodi LX. This is a little different than the Hayward Zodi. This comes in at about 1150. And what's different about it is that instead of a mesh back, they're using a cushion and fabric back. What's also different about this chair is that the lumbar is slightly different. You can't feel it as much because you've got more of a cushion back here pushing into that lumbar, or the lumbar is pushing into the cushion. So it's a little bit more muted. But also what's unique about this is that it can forward perch rather than forward tilt. So a lot of chairs will do the forward tilt where your feet are making better contact with the ground, allowing you to have better posture in your back, but it also gets you better contact with the floor. The perch actually goes beyond that. You can actually go down lower in the front with this chair. And I said that it's a great pairing with standing desks because you're able to raise the height in such a way that you can basically go from standing to kind of perching just by moving a little bit without having to adjust the height of the chair every single time. So you're not having to dial in your settings every single time. You can have it exactly the way you want for when you sit as well as when you stand. This becoming from Hayworth is gonna offer you a 12 year warranty, excellent customer service, free returns, Hayworth in general, awesome brand. Really appreciate working with them. They're good folks. Over here, we have the Steelcase Carmen. This is a new chair from Steelcase. This came out in 2023, and I mark this to be my favorite mesh chair, hands down. Now, some people, when they look at this chair, when they feel this chair especially, they go, I don't like it. It's kind of flimsy. It doesn't use that kind of really dense plastic that the Herman Miller Aeron uses. And I would say that it's done on purpose for two reasons. One is because it's got a much flatter seat design, which means, and when I tested this, I was able to double tuck inside of this chair. I was able to spread my legs wide open in this chair, something I could not do in the Aeron because of its really, really high and defined and, and like really um, high kind of like side bolsters on the Aeron. And so because of that, I much prefer the freedom you got in this chair. And yes, the plastic isn't as rigid on the Aeron, but I think it was designed that way to give you maximum flex and freedom inside of the chair. That is a trend that we're seeing with these new chairs, that it's allowing for maximum mobility and movement inside of your chair so you're not stuck in the same position all day, every day. There's a theory about chairs, about seating, where they say the best position is the next position because it's good that you're moving throughout the day while sitting in your chair. It's not good to be totally static in the same position all day. Steel case, excellent customer service, 12 year warranty, uh, free returns, except for in the EU where you're gonna, where they reduce that warranty down to five years. Moving on to the Hayworth Fern. The Hayworth Fern is my close tie to number one, but it's a number two pick with the headrest. It gets really, really close to that number one pick. 
I love the Hayworth Fern. Again, Hayward chair, 12 year warranty, excellent customer service, uh, uh, free returns. Love this chair. I really like this in the digital knit version, which is going to be one that has a more padded back. This one here is the standard knit version. This one you can buy for as low as I think like $1169, $1170 I believe is the price. The digital knit one starts closer to $1300. And this chair is jam packed full of features. But the biggest thing that I like about it is the back, is the, is the backrest. It goes nice and high. You can get those arms wide open. Uh, the design of the chair is also beautiful as well. When you look at it from the back, absolutely gorgeous. The seat pad is great as well. Now this headrest is not made by Hayworth. The Hayworth headrest that comes on the fern is absolutely terrible. It is a piece of pad that just slides up and down. You can't do and manipulate it in any other way. I had a chair, the, the digital knit one that I have at home, I got one with the headrest and I did not like it. I ripped it off. This one here is done by Atlas Headrest. They created an adapter. So this headrest was actually designed for the Herman Miller Aeron, but uh, working with this uh, one guy, this enthusiast, he basically uh, found a way to adapt the headrest to the Hayworth Fern and so they work together. Now they sell this. So you can buy a headrest from uh, Atlas Headrest for the Aeron, which is why you can see it's not exactly a color match with the fabric. And then you gotta buy their adapter as well. So the headrest and the adapter. And this thing together will cost around $200 for the headrest. I know that's quite steep. You can use my code Entourage for $5 off, but I'm telling you it's the best headrest in the business. Now, in order to use this headrest, I'm gonna say that there is a minimum height minimum. You wanna be about five foot six minimum to use this headrest. You could get away with it if you're about five foot five. And then in terms of max height, I think you could be about six foot three. Uh, so a little bit higher than this list here, this height list. So yeah, I think you'll be good at any height in this range except for the five foot four folks. Sorry guys, unfortunately this headrest just doesn't go low enough for you guys to be usable. Moving over here, we have the Steelcase Leap V2. Now, this is the same one that I had earlier when I showed you the remanufactured. This one is a remanufactured Leap V2, but it's just a stand, uh, 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 what do you call it? A placeholder, yeah, a placeholder because I don't have a new Leap V2 on me. But if you wanted to get a new Steelcase Leap V2, it's going to run you $1,300 from Steelcase. So I've already explained the Leap V2 in depth, but I'll just go over it again. Uh, Leap V2 has a phenomenal tilt function. The seat cushion is nice and thin, but you can also pull it out. Uh, Steelcase makes some of the best chairs in the world. This is probably the number two most popular chair in the world, right behind the Aeron. Phenomenal chair, 12 year warranty, excellent customer service, free returns. Uh, uh, again, except for an EU where the warranty has been reduced, I believe, to five years. Moving over here, we have the Steelcase Gesture. Now, this is the one with a headrest. This is going to be substantially more expensive if you get it with the headrest. But there's two ways you can buy a gesture that fits on this price tier. The first is gonna to be to get a factory authorized return from Crandall Office. The authorized return is that essentially someone bought the, this chair from Steelcase, uh, tried it, and then within their 14 day return period said, I don't want it and returned it back to Steelcase. Uh, Crandall Office then got it from Steelcase and they sell it to us at a discount. So if you want an authorized return gesture, I believe it's gonna be, it's either 11 or $1,200, I forget. And then if you wanna buy a new Steelcase gesture from Steelcase, it's gonna be $1,400. If you wanna get the headrest for it, then it's gonna raise the price up to I believe 16, 1650. So the headrest is quite expensive, but this headrest is the only headrest made by a company uh, that actually makes the chair that I highly recommend. This is one of the best headrests in the industry. I would say it's probably number three at this point because you can totally turn it totally out of the way if you don't like it while you're sitting up. And then you can go ahead and turn it back around when you need it. And you can either bring it in because it can bend forward. This is too far in obviously. I'm just kind of trying to show you. Um, now for this headrest, I'm gonna recommend that you be taller, five foot six or taller in order to get this headrest. If you're shorter than that, just like with the fern, just like with the gesture, you got a really tall back. So if you're shorter than five foot six, you can actually just, this won't be here obviously, you can just rest your head on the back edge of the chair after slouching in your chair a little bit and kind of use that as your headrest. That'll probably be a lot better than this because this, you would be too short, you'd probably end up hitting this part of the headrest, it's not gonna be very comfortable for you, and you're just gonna end up throwing away $200. Uh, best arms in the industry, just a phenomenal chair, feels really good. My friend picked up an authorized return from Crandall Office, um, and he loves the chair. He's like, look, my body feels so much better throughout the day, he works from home, uh, and yeah, he loves it. So, phenomenal chair, steel case, Crandall Office, both offer 12-year warranties, uh, free shipping, 
free returns, all that jazz. This is the Herman Miller Mira 2. This chair doesn't get a lot of love. I sat on it in a showroom and was really blown away by how good it was. I do believe it's a really good mesh chair. Uh, it's not, doesn't quite have the flexibility and openness like the Carmen does, but it's still a really good option. And just in terms of a design perspective, the Mira 2 just screams design. I think it looks really good. It's called the Mira 2. It kind of looks like butterfly wings in the back. I think it looks phenomenal. Uh, it's an all mesh chair. The seat is mesh the back is oh the back you want to get the butterfly knit version not the tri-polymer back whatever and the reason the difference is that the tri-polymer is not going to have this kind of meshy cushion layer and I would say do not buy it without it because the regular tri-polymer back is just a really hard plastic back. I sat in both models both versions in a showroom and the tri-polymer just without this part it dug into my back. It was extremely uncomfortable. I don't know how you could sit in that for long periods of time. This, uh, this butterfly knit back or whatever, this makes all the difference in the world and makes the chair a lot nicer. Uh, the, the front edge, it's really nice. Instead of the seat sliding out like in most of these chairs, this chair instead unwinds like this. You can actually tuck it in and roll it or unroll it like this in the front to give you a little bit more seat depth if you want in the chair. Uh, yeah, just a really phenomenal chair. Uh, this one is gonna run you about $1,400. It's Herman Miller, so you're gonna get 12-year warranty. You're gonna get uh, excellent customer service but I do believe Herman Miller is now charging a return fee for a return, so something to keep in mind with the Mira 2. This is the Anthros chair. This is a brand new chair, 2023. I believe they said they're gonna to try to finish their pre-orders by this month, by this month it being October. Um, they are new to the industry and I think they knocked it out of the park with this chair. This is my favorite new chair of 2023. They're trying to shake up their chair business and I think they've done a really wonderful job with this chair. I, my review of this is gonna go up next week from this video, and I will say that uh, I've been doing a lot of studio work. I've been trying to get things up, trying to set things up, make it a little bit more beautiful, uh, trying to set up for a second channel over there, and after all that, my lower back is aching, and when I sat in this chair, my lower back pain was gone instantly. Uh, I think they're doing a really excellent job. This has the best seat cushion, hands down. I mean, it is just, Excellent. Like you may not like the chair yourself, but you cannot deny that the seat cushion is the best in business. Um, these guys are trying to match the luxury makers of Herman Miller, Steelcase, all these guys by offering a 12 year warranty, free returns. Their customer service, they're so new. So jury's out on that about what they're gonna be like. But the chair itself is very unique uh, design wise. Uh, I like the way it looks, but I can imagine that's pretty polarizing, just like all the other high-end chairs here. Uh, again, full review of this will be out next week. Now, normally this chair would be about $2,000. They offered me a coupon code for $200 off, so it's about $1,800. I don't see that coupon code going away anytime soon, so I'm putting it at $1,800, Anthros chair. Moving over here, this is the Herman Miller Remastered Aeron. This thing comes at, a, in, at I believe, 1805, so they're gonna be about similar prices with the Anthros. And this, in this height category, I'm gonna say, just like with the uh, um, mid, uh, you know, the, what was it, 400 to $1,000, there's gonna be, Herman Miller Aeron comes in size A, B, or C. And in this height category, you can get either an A, B, or C. I'm gonna say that if you're up to about five foot five, you could probably get a Herman Miller Aeron size A. If you're five foot five to about five foot 11, you could probably get a size B. And from five foot 10 to six foot two in this height category is the maximum, probably a size C. There's some overlap there depending on how big you want the chair to be. But this is the remastered one, size B. And then this is the headrest. Herman Miller does not make this headrest. This is made by a company called Atlas Headrest. And it is my number two favorite favorite headrest in the world. They make this headrest in such a way that it matches one-to-one -one with the plastic color. This is the cushion one. They also make a mesh version, which is gonna be a one-to-one -one match with the mesh material and color as well. So you can get it and it looks like it was made by Herman Miller Aeron. It's my number two favorite headrest in the world because the adjustments are phenomenal, super intuitive, and it just feels really, really com comfortable and makes the chair look phenomenal. Uh, other companies, Chinese companies, things like that, they try to knock 
knock it off. Uh, um, that's where all these knockoffs come from, but uh, Alice Headrest is the original and looks and feels really, really good. Uh, Aeron, I, I feel like I don't even need to explain why this chair is on this list. Uh, it's iconic. The mesh, when you sit on this chair, it does feel phenomenal. It's the highest quality mesh. Uh, when you sit on it, you just know, right? It just kind of hugs your back. Just the downside of the Aeron is I think this chair is starting to get dated because nowadays people want to move around their chair. I find myself wanting to move around in my chair and I just feel more locked in place with the Aeron compared to the Mira 2, compared to especially the Carmen over there. But still a phenomenal chair was my first uh, foray into the luxury high, I, I don't call that luxury, just high-end chairs and uh, it, it resolved a lot of back issues, lower back issues I was having with chairs. So this has a soft spot, Herman Miller, excellent customer service, 12-year warranty. You do have to pay for returns. And one last note is that there are gaming Aerons and then there are non-gaming Aerons. And I believe uh, when you look at the specs one-to-one, -one, when you look, uh, um, do all the options the same as the gaming, they're the same price at about $1,800. But the gaming Aeron, there's, it just comes in a darker color. They call it Onyx. It's essentially black. The difference though is that in the gaming Aerons, there is no size A. So if you're shorter, if you're five foot four, five foot five, you want a smaller chair, then you need to get a non-gaming Aeron because again, the gaming Aeron does not come in a size A. Other than that, they are the exact same chair. Features, all the same, just the color is different. Finally, we come to our, my favorite chair. This is number one, uh, tied very closely to the Hayworth Fern over there. You can see I got some artwork of the Herman Miller in body. This is my favorite chair, and I'm just gonna say it right off the bat. Uh, I bought a brand new Herman Miller and Body a couple weeks ago to compare it with the gaming body, and I'm gonna make a video on the gaming versus non-gaming and body, definitive guide to it. And I'll say this, just buy the gaming and body. Don't buy the non-gaming and body. Uh, Price-wise, I believe the non-gaming and body is more expensive, but also when you sit on it, it the gaming body is just so much more cushioned than the non-gaming and body. Uh, I had a few friends in here and they all unanimously said, oh yeah, gaming body, 100%. This thing is definitely softer. For some reason, especially the backrest, it's not as turned in. Uh, the the non-gaming body curls more. And so even my six foot one friend, he was like, oh, the shoulders like really kind of dig in. The gaming body, they also turn in too, but they don't turn in nearly as much and it's softer up here just because of the more cushioning. Um, I don't really need to explain this chair. This has been a uh, super, super popular chair. Uh, looks really great. And then this headrest here, Atlas Headrest, finally released their headrest for the embodies, both non-gaming and gaming embodies. And this is my favorite headrest in the world. Super supportive, super soft, really easy to adjust, really easy to dial in, tighten up. Uh, you can use my code Entourage for $5 off. I don't know if that's gonna begin at the time of this video, but within, uh, again, there'll be notes inside of the spreadsheet as well as in the description when my coupon code goes live for this headrest. But this headrest is available to order now. Again, one-to-one -one match with the chair. The, the fabric is the same color, same material. Um, the back as well, the plastic, the, what they call the pixelated part um, is also same color, same material as well. And if you're wondering how short do you need to be in order to use the headrest, you can actually be five foot four and use this headrest because this headrest is actually able to lower onto the embody and it's actually far back enough that it's not gonna feel like your head is pushing forward at this lower height. So this is one of the few headrests that you can use from five foot four all the way to six foot two. As a matter of fact, if you start breaking and breaking five foot 11 and, and taller, I strongly recommend you do get a headrest for this chair. It's gonna prevent a couple things. One, I talked already about how the shoulders kind of turn in a little bit. The headrest actually kind of prevents you from feeling that. And also it gives you a little bit more upper back and neck support inside of the chair. The taller you get, the less more, you know, you get less and less upper back support in these chairs. And so a headrest is something that I do recommend, especially this one. You don't even need to put it on your back like you can put it right here and it can actually offer more cushion on the shoulder blade area that's how soft this headrest is really phenomenal if you're six foot three or taller congratulations for being everybody's first pick in pickup basketball and for being able to reach the tallest of cabinets I personally don't know what that feels like, but I assume it must be very nice. <laughs> in all seriousness, some overarching advice for you all. The first is gonna be that the chairs on this list seem like it's gonna be a hit or miss for you all. I've seen in the comments some six foot four, six foot five people saying they love this chair, and then some six foot four, six foot five people saying I hate this chair. So I'm gonna strongly recommend that you get a chair with a good return policy, and I'll point out which those are as we move along in this list. 
The second is going to be that you should expect to pay a price premium. With good return policies, it usually means more expenses are built into the price. And it also means that it, you know, you're probably going to need a little bit more material for the bigger size chairs. So something to keep in mind. And then the third is going to be that there is a fix for the height issue. So for example, uh, Herman Miller, for example, uh, can build you a chair and it's got a high, um, uh, what do you call this, a high gas cylinder. So the chair can go really high off the ground. But I found in comments that that's not the main issue. It's not about where your legs end up. It's more about how your back rests on the backrest of the chair. Because for taller folks, your shoulder blades sometimes end up digging in or sometimes chairs are curled a little bit forward and it ends up pushing into your shoulder blades and things like that. So I've often found it's the backrest that's the main culprit, not necessarily the height. So yes, you can get a tall cylinder, but that might not resolve the issue for you. So don't trust when a company says, hey, extra tall. It just means they're gonna make it so that the chair lifts higher off the ground, does nothing about the, the, the backrest. With that being said, let's start with our budget chair, budget tier. And there's really only one chair that I can kind of recommend in this price point. In 2024, I want to do more chairs, more testing with really tall folks, so stay in tune for that. But for, night, for now, the only one I can kind of recommend is the Sihu M90D. Return policy is gonna be okay. It's, you can buy it through Amazon, and Amazon has a good return policy. You just have to make sure you break down the entire chair first, which can be a bit of a hassle. Now, when it comes to why I picked this as, a, as good for taller folks, and the main reason is because the backrest can ratchet up, I think three or four times, so you can get a little bit taller, and hopefully it sits better on the shoulder blades and back. This thing comes at 160 bucks. It's got an excellent seat cushion. It's pretty wide as well, and it's, it's, a, it's a budget chair, but I think it's a solid budget chair. For height ranges, six foot three and above in the price range of $400 to $1,000, we start with the used Herman Miller Aeron size C. Not to be confused with size A or B, size C. It's the largest of the Herman Miller Aeron sizes. Now, a used Herman Miller Aeron can be found on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist for around 450 bucks. Size C is definitely more rare, so it might take you some time to find this chair. It's an iconic chair, it's built like a tank. These older ones are built like tanks. And I do recommend you get a headrest for this chair. Now this one is not built by Herman Miller. Her Herman Miller does not believe in headrests for the most part. Um, this one is made by a company called Atlas Headrest. And this one is the fabric version. Obviously the colors don't match, they make a gray version. This is just one I had on hand and I put it on. It's the best headrest for the Aeron. They also make a mesh version as well. That's a one-to-one -one match with the colors and the mesh material. You can use my code Entourage for $5 off by the way, so yeah, something to keep in mind. If you get a headrest, that's gonna bring the overall price up to about $650. Now you can also, if you don't want to find this online, you know, have to go through all the steps of how to find a good used one, you can also use my friend's Crandall office. They sell refurbished Aerons, it's a little bit more expensive, but you get 12 year warranty and a free return policy as well, so that's an option. And again, I'll link that all in the description as well as in the spreadsheet guide for the Herman Miller Aeron for this chair. Next up is the Andesit Kaiser 3 XL. This one here is the large size, I don't have an XL on hand, but the XL is the bigger size of this chair. Now the reality is that the taller you go, again, there aren't gonna be too many chairs that can really accommodate for your entire back. Sometimes shoulders will fit funny on hard back chairs. This chair is soft all around. The Kaiser 3 XL is, the seat cushion is excellent. So for the taller guys out there, you might not love the idea of a racing style gaming chair, but you're also gonna find that there aren't, again, a ton of chairs that can cover that entire back and give you support all along your back. Racing style gaming chairs could be a solid option. Again, the seat cushion, the cushioning on this chair is really, really good. Next up is gonna be a remanufactured steel case AMIA by a company called Crandall Office. Crandall Office, I love these guys. These guys do use steel case chairs. The remanufactured chairs, basically, they take old chairs and then they put it through their rigorous process of cleaning, sanitizing the chair. And the steel case AMIA, this thing doesn't look very sexy, but it feels incredible. And the reason why I recommend this is because the back is pretty soft all around. So even though it may not be the tallest chair, there's no headrest option, the seat cushion is fantastic, and it's soft all around. And whether you buy it new, which is gonna be $1,000, or you buy it remanufactured, which is gonna be around $500, you're gonna get a 12-year warranty and a free return policy, whether it's from Steelcase, if you buy new for 1,000, or from Crandall Office for $500, again, free returns, 12 year warranty, that's why it's on this list. Moving over here, the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022. Similar to the Andesit, this is the extra large size by the way. 
Similar to the Kaiser 3, uh, there aren't going to be many chairs that can give you support all along the back. Um, I think the Kaiser 3 is definitely softer. The seat cushion is softer. It feels more comfortable of the two. But if you're somebody who likes a firmer bottom, then the Kaiser, then the uh, Titan Evo 2022 could be for you. I believe they offer a five-year warranty on their chair. But from what I've heard, the returns process isn't great. So something to keep in mind with the Titan Evo 2022. Again, when it comes to build quality and looks, though, it is it is best in the business, right? Their armrests are also great. Um, you can also change out their arm cushions and stuff like that with more gel cushions. You can change out the way the chair looks. So if that's really important to you and you want to get a little bit more breathability because you don't sink into the cushion as much as the Honda Seat Kaiser 3, then the Titan Evo 2022 could be an option for you here. Again, this is the XL size and I recommend at this height range, you do get the XL size. Next up is going to be the remanufactured steel case Leap V2. Again, this is from my friends at Crandall Office. Now, what's different about the uh, Leap V2, first of all, it's got soft edges everywhere, which is why I recommend it. But there's going to be two different kinds of Leaps I recommend in this price range. The first is the remanufactured from Crandall Office. Again, what that means is they took used chairs and they put it through their rigorous uh, replacement, sanitization, cleaning. They change out all the fabrics. They do all that stuff to this chair. And then it sells for about 600 bucks. Free returns, 12-year warranty. Uh, and you can also opt to get thicker cushions for the chair if you're on the heavier end. I find that the thicker cushion feels better than the stock one. The stock one, I felt like I could feel the hard bottom, but with the thicker one, I do enjoy this one more. So you can get the remanufactured one, 12-year warranty, again, uh, free return policy, or you can get the authorized return Leap B2. The authorized return is, I believe, going to be about $1,000, and that one is going to be basically Someone who bought it from Steelcase said they didn't like it, returned it in their 14-day window, and then uh, Crandall Office basically buys them and sells them at a discount to us. So yeah, there's two options, again, remanufactured or authorized return. And finally, we come to the Steelcase gesture here. Uh, not new. New is going to be $1,400, uh, the uh, remanufactured version from, again, Crandall Office. With that, you're going to get, uh, the reason why I recommend it is because it's got a tall back. Um, I recommend you do get the extra lumbar support. You can feel it. I think it's better for taller folks. Um, excellent arms, excellent cushion. Uh, when you get the remanufactured version, I believe that one is going to be eight to $900. And the reason why I recommend that is, again, 12-year warranty, excellent customer service, free return policy. You can't go wrong. Steelcase gesture, Steelcase in general is one of the best steel, uh, chair manufacturers in the world. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for the mid-tier chair, mid chair list. Uh, dang it, mid-tier chair price list. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> If you're six foot three or taller and you are a rich biatch and you want the best chair that money can buy, these are my top chair picks for you. Now, something that I uh, kept in mind in this list is going to be, again, the great return policy. Because if you don't remember, in the beginning I said that sometimes these chairs are just hit and miss at this height range. And because of that, you want to get a chair with an excellent return policy. So all of these have an excellent return policy, the weakest of which is Herman Miller, which I believe charges a fee for returns at this point. It's not a huge fee, but something to keep in mind. So starting with the Steelcase Carmen coming in at about 11 30, 1150. Um, this, not this exact color here, but a more basic color, which is just color, uh, is going to be 1150. This is my favorite mesh chair pick, uh, and the reason, and this was actually released this year in 2023 by Steelcase. The reason why I like this chair so much is because I think it's the evolution of a mesh chair. The Herman Miller Aeron is pretty dated at this point, uh, and the biggest issue that I have with the Aeron, I love the chair still, it's just that it's really rigid, and it's got these hard edges, and it kind of forces you into this position, and there's not a lot of flex inside of the chair. The Steelcase Carmen is the total opposite. The seat is pretty flat. I was actually able to double tuck inside of the chair, but most importantly, a lot of people complain because the materials on the Carmen don't feel as high uh, quality compared to the Aeron because it doesn't have that kind of thickness that the Aeron does. And that is actually, I believe, on purpose because it allows a lot of flex inside the chair so that when you're sitting in it, you can actually move and flex inside the chair throughout the day. This being from Steelcase, you're going to get an excellent warranty, excellent return policy, free returns, and excellent customer service. Unless you're an EU, then the warranty has been reduced from 12 years down to 5 years. 
Moving on to our next chair, this is the Hayworth Fern. This starts at $11.65. This chair here is gonna be a little bit more pricey because it's got the stainless steel bottom, but it starts at $11.65. The model that I recommend is actually the digital knit back. This one here is the standard mesh back. It's really comfortable, but the digital knit one is gonna have more cushioning at the expense of a little bit more breathability. It's gonna be definitely warmer than this mesh back here. Now, the Hayworth Fern has a really, really tall back, uh, and it's got soft edges all, the, all around, both in the digital knit and the regular one here. And it's got a headrest option. Now, unfortunately, this thing doesn't go that high. And oh, by the way, I'll talk about the headrest in just a little bit. Let me finish up the chair. Uh, the seat cushion is awesome. There's adjustable lumbar. If you want aggressive lumbar, I recommend you get it. If not, opt out. Um, one thing to note is that the seat cushion, the seat pan can come out. But if you scooch all the way, if you're someone who scooches all the way back inside of your chair, you can feel a gap in that back butt area. So something to keep in mind. The headrest. This is not Hayworth's headrest. Hayworth does make a headrest for their fern, and I'm going to strongly recommend you don't buy it. The Hayworth fern that I have at home is the digital knit model, and it's got the headrest, and I hated it so much that I just removed it. This headrest is actually from Atlas Headrest. It's actually their Herman Miller Aeron headrest, which you can see over there, but it's been adapted for the Hayworth fern. There was an enthusiast, he had an idea to come up with a kind of um, adapter for the fern, and so they used the Atlas headrest and adapted it to the fern, and now Atlas headrest sells both for about $200 total, I think, somewhere give or take. Um, and this headrest, unfortunately, Unfortunately, because it's been adapted, it doesn't go all that high. So for this, I'm going to say the maximum height for this headrest is probably six foot four. Uh, taller than six foot four, you probably shouldn't get a headrest for this chair. It may not fit you in the way that you want. So something to keep in mind. This being a Hayworth chair, you're going to get 12 year warranty, free returns, excellent customer service. Really love the folks over at Hayworth. Definitely worth checking out. Moving over to our next one. This is the Steelcase Leap V2. This is the one you guys saw in that $400 to $1,000 price category. This is actually a remanufactured one from Crandall Office, but it's just a placeholder here because a brand new Steelcase Leap V2 from Steelcase is $1,300 US. Now they do have a headrest version. Do not buy it. That headrest is worse actually than the Ferns headrest. It's just a piece of pad that sticks out. You can't even adjust it. It's just static. Don't buy that one, please. The headrest is awful and you can't remove it. So um, I don't know if I need to re-explain the Leap V2, but just in case, really quickly, Leap V2, probably the number two most popular chair in the world, right next to the Aeron. Um, phenomenal uh, cushion, phenomenal back is something that's been really praised, highly praised the way it feels. Um, there are a few folks that I read in some forums where they said six foot four, six foot five. They absolutely love the Leap. Uh, guys, the Crandall office guys, I talked to them. They said, hey, the Leap B2, just like every other chair, seems to be hit or miss. Some guys love it. Some guys hate it in that height range. Um, and then the tilt mechanism is something that is also phenomenal as well, where the seat actually kind of goes a little bit forward as you lean back. So yeah, Leap V2, phenomenal chair. Being Steelcase, you get that 12-year warranty from Steelcase, you get the excellent return policy, free returns, and you get excellent customer service. Again, if you're in the EU, they've reduced that warranty from 12 years down to five years. Next up is the Steelcase Gesture. Now, there are two ways to buy the Gesture in this price point. The first is gonna be a factory, authorized factory return from my friends at Crandall Office. Now, these guys, basically what they do is if somebody buys a Steelcase Gesture, they don't like it, they return it to Steelcase within that 14-day return window, well then, Crandall Office takes it and then they sell it at a discount. So I believe that's going to cost you about eleven to twelve hundred dollars. And then if you want to buy a new Steelcase gesture from Steelcase, it's going to be fourteen hundred dollars. If you want a headrest model, the brand new one from Steelcase, it's going to run you sixteen hundred ish dollars. So a two hundred dollar add-on. Now the Steelcase gesture, you know. Both Crandall Office and Steelcase offer 12-year warranty, excellent return policy, free returns, and excellent customer service. The Steelcase gesture is just a phenomenal chair. At this height range, I believe you do want to get the additional lumbar support. It'll help, especially in the higher heights. Um, the armrests are the best armrests on the market, super adjustable, really easy to move around and get in place the way you want it. The, uh, the, the back is nice and tall. Seat cushion is fantastic. Just an overall great chair. I have a friend who's hit it gets close. He's not quite you know, six foot three, he's six foot one, six foot two. He sat in the gesture and he was like, this has been a game changer. He said, it's phenomenal. And his back feels so much better in this chair.
Moving to the Anthos chair. This is a brand new chair. I believe they finished doing pre-orders. They're supposed to finish in October. Uh, they sent this over and for me to test. The review of this is not out yet. It'll come out next week following this video. And it has become my favorite new chair in 2023. It is a phenomenal chair. They're trying to do things differently. They're trying to compete against the high-end brands like Steelcase and Herman Miller. I can tell you that even if you don't like this chair, one thing that you cannot deny is that the seat cushion is the best seat cushion in the world. It is so soft, it is so good, it is so plush, just really, really phenomenal. Um, I have friends that are taller, six foot two, six foot three, that sat in this and said they loved it. I had friends that are six foot two, six foot three that sat in this chair, said they didn't like it. So um, yeah, it's really gonna depend. Uh, Anthros, again, trying to compete with the Herman Millers and the steel cases. They're offering 12 year warranty on this chair, free returns as well. Their customer service, they're a new company, so we'll see, jury's out on that. Um, this chair normally costs around $2,000, but they gave me a coupon code, uh, $200 off, so this chair effectively, and it's not a temporary coupon code, I don't believe, so this chair effectively comes in at about $1,800 US. Um, yeah, I'm really digging that they're doing something different. Moving now over to the Herman Miller Aeron. This is the remastered Aeron, the Herman Miller Aeron, and this has a headrest. Again, this headrest is not made by Herman Miller, it's made by a company called Atlas Headrest. The Herman Miller Aeron, it's iconic chair, right? This is the remastered version. They start, they changed everything over from the older ones in 2017. It's got a different lumbar type system. Um, and in this height range, you wanna get a size C. That is the tallest of the bunch. The one you see here is a size B. So, you know, if you're looking at size comparisons, this one isn't the one you should buy. You should buy the one uh, bigger. Now, um, mesh is phenomenal. When you sit in it, you're just like, oh man, this mesh is fantastic. The downside is that it's got these really hard edges on the side, really hard edges on the back here, and it really kind of keeps you in that position. And the chair itself is super duper rigid, which means there's not a lot of flexing, not a lot of moving, not a lot of stretching that you're able to do inside of this chair throughout the day. Um, at this height range, I strongly do recommend you get a headrest. It'll just provide a little bit more support for that neck and upper back area. Uh, I prefer the fabric one that Atlas Headrest sells, but they also sell a mesh one. And the beauty of the Atlas Headrest is that the plastic material, color, the mesh, if you get the mesh one, the mesh color, it's gonna be a one-to-one -one match, so it looks like it matches, it looks like Herman Miller made it. It's phenomenal, really well done. You can use my code Entourage for $5 off. You can also use my code Entourage for $5 off the uh, Hayward Fern headrest as well. Um, just really, really well done headrest. Uh, Herman Miller, 12-year warranty, excellent customer service. Return policy has changed, so now I believe you have to pay a small fee for returns, but as always, it's pretty easy to do. You just put it back in its box and wait for someone to come pick it up. Just really well done. This is an iconic chair, probably the most popular chair in the world. So, and it, I've got really fond memories of it. When I first entered into my uh, foray into high-end chairs, the Aeron was my first and uh, it did a lot of good for my back, uh, especially with the chairs I was using at that time. You can either get the gaming one or the non-gaming one. They're priced exactly the same. The only difference is going to be color. The gaming Aeron, you can get Onyx, which is essentially black. And then with the non-gaming, you can get this gray, this is called graphite, or you can get a light gray white chair, white model. And I think that one's gonna cost a little bit more because of the color. I think it looks the most beautiful in my humble opinion. Uh, so those are the different options for the Aeron. Moving on now to the final pick, my favorite chair of the bunch, my number one pick, uh, really closely followed by the uh, Hayworth Fern over there with the headrest. You can see I got some artwork of the Embody over there. This is the gaming Embody from Herman Miller. So the Herman Miller gaming Embody. And this is my favorite chair, especially now with this headrest. Again, this headrest not made by Herman Miller. It was made by Atlas Headrest, and this is my favorite headrest in the world. This is my favorite headrest in the world. The Aeron headrest would be number two favorite headrest, along with the Hayworth Fern, and then my number three favorite headrest in the world is actually the Gestures headrest. This is a phenomenal headrest. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Anyways, the Herman Miller Embody. Super deep seat, super wide. The best thing about it is that you can actually expand the seat even further, and instead of doing a slide pad like majority of these chairs, you actually undo the tongue, so it actually extends the front of it, so you get a lot of depth in that seat. You get a super tall back, uh, it's cushioned all around, and then uh, if you're tall, especially in this height range, I do recommend you get a headrest for it. Uh, this headrest is so soft, so supportive, really easy to dial in exactly the way you want, really easy to adjust, 
and to really screw in to tighten it down just feels phenomenal and the best part is that it's going to be again a one-to-one -one match the colors the fabric type the backing of it it's going to be a one-to-one -one match with your gaming and body now i have a non-gaming and body that i purchased a couple weeks ago and the gaming body and i was going to do it and i'm still going to i'm going to do a definitive comparison video of these two chairs i'm going to say just get the gaming and body don't get the non-gaming body. Get the gaming body because even though the body has existed for a long time and it's essentially the same chair, they did add more cushion to the gaming body. I had a bunch of people come in and test these two chairs and they all said unanimously the gaming body is more comfortable. So get the gaming body, especially as you guys get the taller folks, the back turns in. And so the number one complaint for taller folks has been that this digs into their shoulder blades. This turned in on the back shoulder here. The gaming body has more cushion here and it's also less pronounced for some reason. Not exactly sure why. And this is why I say you should pair it with the headrest because the headrest will actually provide you more cushion on that back, on those shoulder blades to make sure that it's not digging in at the upper end if you decide that you want the gaming body. I mean, this thing looks beautiful, really looks amazing. Um, so yeah, get the gaming one, not the non-gaming one. I believe the gaming body is actually cheap than the non-gaming one as well. So there's a big bonus there as well. If you want an active seating chair, I don't really test that many on this channel, but of those that I've tested, these two are by far my favorite. Now, active seating chairs are chairs that will force you to use more muscles, force you to use more of your body so that you feel more energized, more recharged throughout the day. Especially during lunch lulls, when I tested these, I, that's when I use them, because that's when I always want to take a nap. And after testing these, I was wide awake. I mean, they just do a really, really great job. These two are my favorite. We'll start, with, we'll start with the more simpler of the two. This is the Ariel One by a company called Core 360. Since the, I reviewed this, they came out with the Ariel Two. But honestly, I love the Ariel One. I don't know why I would pay more for the Ariel Two. I find this chair to be fantastic. Now, some people made fun of me in the comments saying like, hey, that's a stool. And I guess you could say it is because it doesn't really have a back. You essentially sit in it and then this thing is not static. It wiggles and wobbles and moves every which way. So that's the point of the chair. As you sit in the, as you sit in the chair, you can wobble your hips, you can move them around and it forces you to really use that core throughout the day to give yourself that stability. Now, this chair, what I found to be really surprising was that, you know, it doesn't look like it's gonna hold my weight. I'm 176 pounds, but I actually did crunches inside of the chair on camera, and this does not feel like it's gonna break whatsoever. So you can even do some aerial crunches in the air if you really wanted to throughout the day. Really solidly built. You guys can use my coupon code for, I forget how much off. That'll all be in the spreadsheet in the description down below. Really like this. I still use it to this day whenever I'm reviewing a chair. Sometimes I'll pull this out, pull this out and kind of look at it next to the chair. It's really great for like, even when you do projects and stuff, because it can tilt forward really wonderfully, really well designed. This chair over here is the Capisco chair by a company called Hoag. It's spelled H-A-G, but I believe it's Swedish, and in Sweden it's pronounced Hoag. And this is now basically called the Joe Rogan chair because Joe Rogan uses this on his podcast. His guests use it on his podcast. There's actually a clip of him raving about how much he likes the Capisco chair. They're called Capiscos, and these are ergonomic chairs. You notice we've been sitting in this place. It's two and a half hours in the podcast wow. now. We don't, our backs aren't hurting. Comfortable, beautiful yes, chair. Yes, yeah. they feel good too. And this chair is really, really unique, and I really, really like it. Essentially, this chair is designed so that you can sit however the hell you want. But Joe Rogan sits in it normally. He says he likes the way it feels. So this chair, I can sit in it like this at an angle if I want it. I don't have to sit exactly straight. And the legs are super wide out and they've got grips on them so you can raise those feet up in case you're shorter or you just like to play and fidget more and move around inside of your chair. But the seat cushion is where this thing gets really unique. By the way, the backrest can be adjusted higher just like that. And it's got three quote unquote formal positions you can sit on it. The, one, the first is going to be the regular way you can sit. The next is going to be you can sit sideways in your chair like this. And the last way is that you can kind of ride it like this and sit like this. But really, you can sit on this however you feel like. You can even sit on it with both your knees up and do work like this. It really is meant to accommodate however you like to sit. Just some things to keep in mind is that the seat is definitely on the firmer side. It's not super duper firm. I'm 176 pounds. I can compress the cushion just fine and it feels comfortable. And I initially thought that 
This was meant for shorter folks, like I fit it really nicely being five foot six, but Joe Rogan seems like a big guy and he loves this chair. He finds it super comfortable. So something to keep in mind that maybe it's not just for the shorter folks out there. If you're taller, I'll find out how tall he is and I'll put it here. But if you're taller and you wanna look for something with active seating, where you don't have to give up like this, you don't even have a backrest. But if you want some kind of backrest on your chair, but you also wanna sit actively, this could be an option for you. We did it. Ultimate Chair Buying Guide 2023 is complete. The spreadsheet guide will be linked in the description below, as well as affiliate links to everything will be in the description. Please check that out. Affiliate links, coupon codes, full length reviews of all the chairs will be there. Please consider using those links. It really helps this channel a lot. Like, subscribe, wanna hit 100,000 subscribers. That would be amazing. I appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you did or didn't in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe and as always, stay honest.